This week I'm driving the new Subaru Solterra all-wheel drive, which is the base model in a two model lineup and the first EV that Subaru has produced for our market. It's remarkably similar to its closest rival, the Toyota BZX4, and that's because they share electrical underpinnings, some tech, and even some internal styling. But Subaru is only offering the Solterra in an all-wheel drive drivetrain for the Australian market, which reasserts its adventuring heart. It competes against other electrical medium SUVs like the Kia EV6 and market leader Tesla Model Y. And this week I've really put it through its paces with my family of three, so stay watching to see what we've discovered. There are two variants for the Solterra range and both of them come with dual motored powertrains. This is the base model and is priced from $69,990 before on-road costs. Compared to its dual-motored rivals, this is actually the most affordable option. But there are things that remind you that it's a base model, like its cloth seats and manually adjustable front passenger seat. That being said, this still gets some lovely features like heated front seats, heated rear outboard seats, a heated steering wheel, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The full specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. The Solterra has its own vibe going on compared to the rest of the Subaru family, and that's probably because of the Toyota partnership. The crisp body pleating and the sharp edge taillights at the rear give me more of a RAV4 vibe than anything else. I don't mind all of the heavy use of black plastic mouldings on this colour, but I think if it was on a lighter colour paintwork, it might stand out a little bit too much for me. That being said, I really like the design of this. It's fun and it's different, and I also like that it's not as pillowy in its shape as some of its rivals can be. The cabin is also very different from anything that I've seen from Subaru so far. Some of it's fun, like the squared off steering wheel, which is a little bit rally car-ish, and some of it's a little bit odd, like how the placement and shape of the digital instrument panel is. It just feels a bit disjointed from the rest of the tech on the dash for me. There's grey knit fabrics on the dashboard and seats, which makes the cabin feel very warm and inviting, but a lot of the other trims are actually a very basic looking black fabric, which does not support the price point of this car. I also quite like how shiny the black inserts are across the rest of the trims, but they only look good when they're clean. And this week I have been cleaning so many fingerprints from my kid. Because of the extra wide center console, it kind of feels like you're sliding into a cockpit, like a Polestar 2. Once you get used to it, it's great. And I actually don't feel like it's cramped on space at all in this front. The front seats are also ridiculously comfortable. I could definitely do a long road trip in them. And I really like that the driver's side is electric with powered lumbar support. I could also get it into a good driving position as well. Individual storage is a little bit lower because you miss out on a glove box, but you still have some pretty good options, like the center console, which has great storage pockets up front, as well as a shelf underneath. The charging options are good throughout the car because each row gets two USB-C ports, but the front also enjoys a USB-A port and a 12 volt port too. The 12.3 inch touchscreen multimedia system is pulled directly from Toyota. So the graphics look good and the everyday accessibility is really good as well. I like that you get built-in satellite navigation in this, but you do miss out on over the air updates and a dedicated Subaru connected services app. The back seat is seriously great for space. For the class, you have heaps of legroom and headroom back here. I also like that middle seaters will be comfortable because of the flat floor and the 212 millimeter ground clearance means that this is a very easy car to get in and out of. My seven year old son really enjoyed this row. He found it to be comfortable and he had a good view out of the window. The amenities are also pretty good considering that you get those heated outboard seats and USB-C ports, but you also get directional air vents, a fold down armrest with two cup holders. And I really like that in each door in this car, you get really good sized bottle holders. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tethers. Two seats are gonna fit best and I had no trouble fitting my big booster seat this week as well. 
The Solterra comes with a tyre puncture repair kit and the loading space is level. It only has 410 litres of boot capacity, which is a little bit lower than some of its rivals. But as you can see, it actually fits a substantial amount of gear in here and was perfect for my week with it. I also like that for both Solterra models, a power tailgate is standard kit. The Solterra all-wheel drive has dual electric motors that produce a combined power output of 160 kilowatts and 337 newton meters of torque. It's got enough grunt to feel fun and zippy even on the open road, but it's not as powerful as some of its dual motored rivals. I've really enjoyed driving this car. Everything feels quite well balanced from the power delivery to how it handles and grips the road. Also, there's not a lot of passenger movement when you corner in this, which I really like. It's really comfortable to handle this car. The steering is on the right side of firm and that makes it really easy to maneuver in tight city streets. I also just like the weight of the car. It's not light footed. It feels quite solid, but it's not too heavy. The ride comfort in this is fantastic. The suspension really absorbs the bumps, but I can still feel the road, which is good. And the ride comfort in terms of cabin quietness is pretty good too. You do get a little bit of road noise, but other than that, it's a very relaxed and refined cabin experience. This is your best friend in a car park. The smallish size and the top notch 360 degree view camera system makes it super easy to park. And I also just like how, how good the visibility is out of the wide windows. I feel like I can see everything around me, which is really good in a car of this size. The official energy consumption figure is a very low 14.1 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. And I averaged not far off at 15.2 kilowatt hours after doing mostly urban road driving this week. That is great consumption, but the official driving range from the large 71.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery is only up to 414 kilometers, which again is lower than some of its rivals by a good portion. So I would still have a bit of range anxiety with this on a longer trip. The Solterra has a type two CCS charging port, which means that you can benefit from faster DC charging speeds. It can accept up to 150 kilowatts. So on 150 kilowatt DC charging, Charger, you can go from 10 to 80 percent in as little as 30 minutes. On a 7 kilowatt AC charger, you can go from 0 to 100 percent in just about nine and a half hours. That drops down to six and a half hours on an 11 kilowatt AC charger, which isn't as fast as what you might like, but it's still worth plugging in at your local shops when you do some shopping. The Solterra has a great suite of safety features and a special mention to just all of them in general is that you're aware of them, but they're not intrusive, which really elevated the driving experience for me. I highlight too is the digital rear view mirror because the back window is quite narrow. The Solterra has seven airbags, including a front center airbag, as well as a maximum five star ANCAP safety rating from testing done in 2022. The full safety specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. The Solterra comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty term and the battery is covered by an eight year or up to 160,000 kilometer warranty term. Both are usual for the class, but what's unusual is that you get complimentary servicing for up to five years or 75,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. Servicing intervals are more in line with a fuel-based car at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, but hey, free is free. The Subaru Solterra all-wheel drive showcases a well-rounded effort when it comes to passenger comfort, space, and external sharp styling. But it doesn't always come out ahead of the pack when you start comparing it to some of its rivals. However, I really like it for what it is, and it gets a 7.8 out of 10 from me. My seven-year-old son found his row to be very comfortable, and he liked touching all the buttons and things this week, and he gives it an eight out of 10. If you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au, and I'll see you next week. 
hopefully we get much better weather on our next shoot. <laughs>